Hi everyone, Ian here. So today we're going to be looking at running DistroBox on the Steam Deck. A number of you had mentioned it, so I wanted to check it out, and I discovered a few interesting things. So DistroBox is a way of running different distributions of Linux from the terminal within a container. So you can have multiple installs of Ubuntu or Fedora sat on top of your existing Linux distro. The distro containers you create will be tightly integrated with the host, allowing sharing of the home directory of the user, storage, USB devices, and even graphical apps, which I'll show later. And um, what's particularly interesting is it's possible to install on your Steam Deck too, in order to have a full Linux distribution. So you might remember that upgrades of SteamOS will remove anything not under the user space, so here you have more freedom to install without this happening. And this means we can set up the Steam Deck in a similar way that Windows Subsystem for Linux does for Windows with a tight integration for programming without a dual boot configuration. So it's essentially a Linux subsystem for Linux, if you like. Here I'm going to show you how you can set it up and show how it resolves some issues I hit with PyEnv and Docker in my previous coding on the Steam Deck video. To install, as we've only got access to user space on the deck, we need to install DistroBox and its dependencies into a custom directory, which is under .local. This is a couple of simple curl commands to install DistroBox and its dependency podman, but they're buried a bit on the DistroBox repo, so I'll link to a blog post I've written where you can copy them without having to pause this video. I did this on a clean install of SteamOS and I needed to have changed my deck user's password before I could run them. So once they're both downloaded, both binaries then need to be added to the path and that requires opening the bash rc file and copying the export commands to the bottom. You should then be able to access DistroBox from the terminal and creating a distro is pretty easy. Just type DistroBox create dash i and the distro that you want to create. So I used Ubuntu 22.10. And once that's finished, you should be able to enter it with distro box enter and then the name of the image that you've just created. And it should spit this back out at the terminal so you can uh, uh, find it. Now I found when entering the Ubuntu image, I kept getting a package installation error, but I reran the command and it did eventually work. And to prove that I'd actually got into Ubuntu and that I was running it, I cast out the release file there, which you can see. Um, and you can also notice that the prompt changes when we're in the distro. One of the problems I originally hit on my coding on the deck video was that PyEnv wouldn't install as I couldn't install any of its build dependencies. This isn't a problem with DistroBox since I can install all the build dependencies required in the container and install PyEnv there too. I've copied the commands I've used from the PyEnv repo but again I'll link to a blog post with them in. Once all the build dependencies are installed you'll also need to install git and clone the PyEnv repo under your home directory. You then need to update the bash rc file again to include pyenv this time. And then at that point you're able to install any version of Python that pyenv has available. Here's where things got pretty confusing. I now had three versions of Python installed. On the left we have a terminal using SteamOS, which has the version of Python that's pre-installed with it, which is 3.10.2. On the right we have DistroBox with the version installed by default in the Ubuntu container, which for me was 3.10.7. Though this is only py under Python 3, not Python, and you also have any Python versions that you add with pyenv. So for me, I also installed 3.10.8. So you'll definitely need to keep a careful eye that you're always running within a distro box and what Python version you're on. I also use pyenv to install pipenv uh, using the pip command, so pip install pipenv. Uh, under DistroBox in order to get a package manager for virtual environments. Now pipenv is one of my favorite package managers and I just it was able to confirm that actually it is possible to get a virtual environment configured within DistroBox 2. So here I install requests and I make a request and it all works as expected. It's also possible to run window applications from within DistroBox containers. And to do this, you need to add an xhost command to the bottom of the bash rc file. And then you can sudo apt install uh, any GUI application that you fancy. So here I install something called meld, which is a diff tool. And then I'm able to bring that up within Ubuntu, or within DistroBox, in order to look at differences on the local on files on my local machine. So this is really handy to be able to run these applications that I wouldn't otherwise be able to run on the Steam Deck.
The final thing I wanted to see if I could do was install Docker. And I spent a large amount of time trying to install it under my Ubuntu image, which didn't work, before realizing it actually wasn't necessary. DistroBox's dependency Podman could do it instead. It's a daemonless container engine with an interface that mimics Docker's and allows us to run Docker images. In fact, if you take a look at their homepage, they mention aliasing the Docker command to Podman instead. This doesn't involve DistroBox at all, and because it's already installed, we can just go ahead and run any container we like. I tested with a Flask image, and Podman was able to pull it down and run it without any issue at all. And this is great as a substitute for Docker and being able to run it within the user space. It makes things really nice for us on the deck. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video today. DistroBox and Podman really seem like they fixed the problems that I had getting programming tools set up on the deck and really turn it into a useful development machine. So yeah, if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you like this sort of thing. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.